All right. Oh, here we go. That's looking. Got greens. No drop frames. All six megs are going through. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll do spectrum today. Alrighty, about that. Well, thank you everybody for your patience. Um, I'll go let the. <laughs> uh, welcome back. We're going to get started in just an extra minute. How are you doing, Andrew? Do you have a fun weekend? I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Um, I, uh, you know, weekends, days, they all sort of flow. The, the one thing is with weekends is I don't get, like, work meetings and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I still have all my Andrew projects and stuff. Like, on Friday, I got my new book back to like edit and get it turn it in by like this Friday. So Ooh, fancy. Yeah. That's one word for it. <laughs> <laughs> to work is another word. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, uh I'm sure everyone is, is excited oh. for your new book. Whatever it may be. Yeah. This is the uh, next the okay and Jessica Blackwood book. Oh, right on. Crossover episode. Yeah. Yeah. So fun time. It is the most nerdy book I've written so far. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's saying something. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I, I almost did a spit take. <laughs> I almost want. I almost want that to be the jacket quote is from yourself. <laughs> quote. Spit take, Brian. Or, no, no, no. The nerdiest book I've written so far, <laughs> Andrew <laughs> May. <laughs> it, it's it's a. Uh, it, it goes off into this whole. Uh, thing where uh like involves like what may be an alien signal yep. you know and, and being a theo Cray, jessica blackwood book you know do your own calculations yeah uh, uh, or, but, or perhaps uh, somebody's figuring a way to fake an alien signal but that gets into because i try to build i try to build like the the best like closed room mystery about everything you do to try to detect, figure out right if it's real or not like i'm like well what's the process oh, that's and so fun. i try to answer all of that so that's why mm -hmm. i'm sure there are people really into it, like bad ah, but you forgot uh, about it, this, it reminds or... me of uh what amounted to about three minutes of the movie contact but the idea uh that uh they raised the possibility that that the whole alien signal was a hoax and with somebody with immense resources and i was like that that sounds like so much fun how would you do that and <laughs> it yeah totally Totally, uh, totally. I'm I sure mean, that's where the idea came from. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that's where it came from. But no, but, no, you're not, you're not hurting my feelings. And I'm, you're probably that's probably exactly where this started from was just the idea of thinking of how that you would do that. You know. Mm. So, so uh, uh, well, good. Well, it, it, it's. Uh, I guess what I was trying was trying to ex express was. Uh, that was a that was a neat idea that that movie drove right the fuck pet, oh sorry right the hell past and uh, yeah and uh, and and if hypothetically that were covered in another book I would be very very excited <laughs> yeah I I'm gonna say with no no amount of uh, guilt at all I am sure ever since I read that book that idea had been back of my head like <laughs> well how would you do this. <laughs> All right, I think I am ready to go if you are ready to start weird things. Heck yeah, man. I'm feeling weird. All right. And I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast, where we're three very healthy people here. Brian Brushwood. Hey, man. Uh, tri tri triple vaxxed. I, I had the disease, I had the Johnson & Johnson, and I just got my booster mRNA. Ah. Like, I'm bulletproof. Uh, I want to talk about that a second. Bryce Castillo. Uh, hello, I just ran a 200-meter dash. That's how healthy I am, and I'm not even winded. And I'm Andrew Maine. Other than eating about five pounds of Korean barbecue last night, I'm, you know, feeling good. I mean, I mean that's that's uh, proof of, of how, how mighty you are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, things we're not supposed to say 
when the GHA vaccine first came out, I'm like, oh, we got a single dose thing. And, and I'm like, like, it's good. It's good. But there's going to be an asterisk we're going to be adding to this later on, <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, the idea of boosters and other stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and even then, even out of the gates, Johnson & Johnson had the lowest uh, total epi- efficacy. But, it, but it's like anything over 70% was, was like, like, we'll take what we can get. Right. But it wasn't over seventy percent though. That was a oh, thing. it wasn't. Oh, okay. like, we're, 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 no, oh, okay. like I, I don't know. Everything I say is fantasy and fic. There is some new data that says like that the one of the effects of all these is much lower. Because also the hmm. new variants and stuff and things you can't you can't predict too. And I don't want to be like, ah, it's a whole conspiracy. And you know they're popping the like like oh it came out of a lab. I'm pretty sure about that. It was accidental leak. I will tell you that that part I believe. But everything else, like, because people are like, oh, what's a Delta variant? I'm like, oh, they, it's it's but, natural. You know, uh, I mean, thing that it, it's it's what viruses do. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. You're like, yeah, it's product of evolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, uh, oh, I just now got the joke. Somebody in the chat asked how my 5G reception was, <laughs> and I just now realized I forgot about the conspiracy theory that 5G towers gave you COVID. Well, no, the shot the shot gives you five G. Oh, that's what it is. You get okay. the five, and then na- it's the nano machines, Brian. Really, you know, just I just keep up a little bit. Is oh. it is it crazy if I say if one of those people was teaching a science class at the adult center, I would want to go sit in that class and listen to this effing explanation? Like it's like flat earthers. I'm like, okay. So when I talk to my friends in India, and it's night there, and it's day here how does that work and then they send you the graphic of like the the sun is a spotlight moving around and you're like mm. well, and, 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 and we've we've talked a bit about this but but it's like um man flat earthers are living the ultimate arg like they they get to solve really fun bizarre puzzles all day mm. because they're like that's a really good question let me think on that. And, and what and, kind of turtle would it be? Well, well exactly. Mm. Well, and 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 uh, in in the natural world, uh, the, you know, we have Occam's razor, and the simplest explanation tends to be the best. But but in a conspiracy world, you get to add unending forever levels of complexity. Same with you know the uh, the movement of the celestial spheres to justify the bizarre motions of the planets because you, you know the earth can't be round those are the lights that are hanging from the ceiling and yeah. there's an ac unit and so right. it's making exactly. them exactly that's when, the wiggle when you when your a priori assumption is everything is aligned we're being lied to then you could build anything you want and, and it could be infinitely infinitely complicated that's which is yeah. Yeah. which which again I, uh, uh, I don't think any of the three of us believe is, is correct factually, but, but I will vouch for, I understand the allure of that lifestyle of, of, sure. of living in that, the, the same way, you know, like, look, people tried to make Quidditch a real game. <laughs> Some say that, that they do. And that is a dumb, dumb I went rules. to, I went to, I went to like the first, like the first big Harry Potter conference, like the Nimbus con. Mm. And Andrew, what's your proof? There were 800 people and there were five dudes. And I was one of those dudes. Yeah. Okay? That was yes. crazy, right? So I hear, oh, we're doing a Quidditch. They're doing Quidditch in the, uh, you know, the, you know, the Raven Wood Schlime, whatever, ballroom, whatever they renamed it, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, what's this going to be? You know, in my head, I'm imagining like, how, how would I, would I use like RC planes and doors and stuff or, how would I make this work? Acrobatic <laughs> like this people. <laughs> yeah, and people in robes just humping brooms and just jumping from square to square. I'm like, this is the lamest thing ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But so was Space War on an oscilloscope, uh, <laughs> and it eventually led to Far Cry 6. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I do... It, it, I, like you know when you when you realize that people who are embrace like real extreme conspiracy theories often like they are people very par not to say that you know not all conspiracy theories are false but let me get you like very paranoid and you get into sometimes the lack of curiosity like i've i've had that discussion where okay you're saying like the earth is flat like why not charter like a ship to go get photos like i would pay 
on this, I'd pay for this Kickstarter. I would, I would donate to this to see this thing. Like, no, nope, they'll never let you get there. They're gonna put video like, okay, screens. I, You've seen the Mandalorian. They're I, gonna put video screens around you, Andrew. No, but like, they're like, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, all those stuff. I'm like, okay, like, show us the Coast Guard stopping you and telling you you can't go on. Like, we're like, who do you, you think controls far. all the uh, devices? They're, they're they're just gonna confiscate them. Yeah. And- yeah, I just it's like so you you're you're like if you try to go to Area 51 first there's outer is like whack and hut security there's private security if you make it past there there's military security you will get that far to security them saying sorry can't go here turn away right. so I don't know that was all weird like there could be an answer here nope I'm not even gonna try I'm not even gonna try to get that answer well, because it's like there's a risk. Uh, and I guess also it's like, if you're going to accept a flat earth, you're going to accept some level of magic, uh, at which point you could say like, well, how come if you keep going this way, you end up in the same place again? It's like, uh, haven't you played the video game portal? Like, that's just the way it goes. Oh no, (laughs) no, Brian, I'm sorry. I'm going to correct you on this. Uh, if you walk in a straight line in the desert, you come back to where you were because we walk in a circle. Oh, right. is that is is that the currently accepted? Yes, Brian. Explanation, yes, Brian. But what about? I'm, sh- I'm happy to school you on how the world, the flat world, works. How if you that, want more information? How does that work for boats, though? <laughs> well, that was, but that was my favorite thing, like the dumbest, the dumbest thing ever. And again, I don't mean to make any make light of anybody's belief, but any belief where you're really adamant about here's evidence, no, going the other way was when I'm like, okay, how is it? How is it? Like 180 times, I could understand, like, you didn't know that it was daytime while it's dark here. But I'm like, I'm on FaceTime with my friends in India. It's day. It's night here. What is the sun doing? Who who was the uh, the NBA guy that was into that and then just straight up admitted, like, uh, eventually he came to a place where it's like, look, guys, not going to lie. Uh, I got algorithmed. I just started clicking on YouTube videos and I got deeper and deeper. And uh, and I understand now. Thank you for all those. Like, like it was it was what every skeptic would hope somebody would respond yeah. to uh, when presented with the truth. Ky- Kyrie Irving. It was yeah. Kyrie Irving back in uh, 2018. That's amazing. And you know what? That like, almost never because, happens. Like, and because like. How often do you or any of us do that? How many of you do any of us go like, I have this sort of belief of like, uh, oh yeah, I'm totally wrong on that, everybody. Like, I'm I'm gonna hide that. And you're like, oh, I do that a long. I was, I was joking, guys. It's joking. Well, and and I think that's one of the um, uh, hat tip to Peter Bogosian, and I always forget the co-author of How to Have Impossible Conversations. Uh, but when you frame things not as this is truth or right or wrong, but instead frame them as this is where I'm at right now, then mm-hmm. you don't ever have to regret like that's where I was back then. Right. And 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 if you if if the train of thought that you're per- ch- chasing is we still haven't exactly solved or proved this, then you kind of get this unending motivation yeah. to to say, well, I just I need to just unravel it a little bit more. And- right. Or I'd love to hear more. Like right. uh, and uh, when you. Yeah, would you embrace the idea that what I know, this is the probability? What I know and I understand, I believe the probability. Like, I gave up the idea of determinism a long time ago. I believe the universe, the universe is probably deterministic in a sense, but my ability to understand it isn't. So I'm like, oh, based on what I know, this is likely to be true. Oh, new evidence. Okay, well, that changes it. I'm not dumb. My, my, my crystal, you know, crystal and, you know, the difference between like, you know, crystal and fluid knowledge, you know, crystals, your facts and fluid is your ability to interpret them. Like, oh, my, the the knowledge changed, but my my I didn't get dumber. I just said, oh, I'll apply this to it here. Mm, mm, mm. Um, yeah, I, Mad Mike Hughes. They see the flat earther trying to launch himself high enough. I don't know if that's the same guy that actually wasn't a flat earther, but was using flat earther money to fund his rocket. Oh, I we, just we like yeah we yeah we we yeah. talked about that that uh, yeah. which which uh, pretty pretty good pretty good uh, 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 scheme uh, until yeah, he passed but, away. Yeah, well. <laughs> He lived forever so, <laughs> until he got hit by a train and died at 57. <laughs> Anyhow, I mean, these people who think that it's all fake or whatever, bless them. I can't understand it. So, anyhow, I want to talk to you guys about simulation theory. Oh, I have yeah. a new yeah. idea on <laughs> why <laughs> I think. This is, what's funny is I was immediately thinking about how it's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm currently in the many worlds theory. The idea that, yeah. that, that, that we're just <laughs> constantly branching. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, like, like simulation theory. Now I believe that one, you know, and well, people are like, well, you know, 
what's the difference? I'm like, I can explain it, but you're not wrong to ask me that. Simulation theory is especially fun to sit with because uh, it's very difficult for me to distinguish it from uh, 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 Abrahamic religions. <laughs> The idea is that this is a created world yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that, that, that mean, was built so that we would exist in it. <laughs> but it's it's funny because uh, there's like uh, on like the opposite side of the coin, there's like the idea of like a manifesting things and, and re extending out to the universe. And I've, I've seen that some factions of that ha are like accepting that there's there's like a father persona in your ideal of. Well, of I don't I don't. The creating. I I don't know that I that that's in the version of my true doctrine of simulation. <laughs> um, I again, simulation theory comes upon you. Basically, say if I accept this to be true, then I think this is likely to be true. Mm. Not to say oh this is true, but if you're like if you accept okay, computational power increases, ability to simulate things increases. And then if you if there if it's possible to create a billion, you know, a trillion simulated realities as real as our own, the question is, it's not, oh, therefore we are. It's like, how do you establish that we're not in a simulation? Well, it's a it's a bit like the logic of uh, whether or not we ever contact them. You know, we know for a fact that life seems to exist on this planet that is at this temperature that has liquid water. Look at the number of stars, blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, the the more you crunch the numbers, the more it seems like somewhere, some... Somewhere's got to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, simulation theory seems to be a, a, a version of the same argument, would you would you say? the my One of my first Slashdot news posts back in the early aughts before the Bostrom book and all that gained attention was uh, I applied the Drake equation to simulation theory. Oh, that's great. Uh, the Bostrom book was, is uh, Nick Bostrom's, uh, what was it called? Super... Uh, super Intelligence? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, we've talked about it before, but th that's the one that... Uh, 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 that 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 scares the hell out of us about AI <laughs> with uh, uh, with the stapler creating engine. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, was it that or one? Paper but clip. yeah, he was. Paper clip. He 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 was the most recent person to sort of popularize that i the idea, and I think our well our eloquent, but it goes back for information theory goes back to like early 20th century versions of that go on and on, and then became you know the people are, oh the Bostrom thing. Like, well, it's he, he deserves credit for exploring the philosophical, but it was like. It's been a thing, you know. Anybody, everybody walked out of the Matrix was going, hmm. <laughs> what, if, what if? Yeah, yeah they were. Um, they were all going, hmm. That's a lot like Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> <laughs> Though I don't think the the percent that saw Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, yeah, well, well, exactly. That was the whole point of the of the Matrix is is let's take Ghost in the Shell and bring it to the mat, make it palatable to the masses. Mm. I never knew that. Oh really? Yeah, I, I I believe if I remember cor correctly, the story is the the, the Wachowski siblings uh, brought in, pretty much they're like this. Uh. <laughs> mm. I see similarities. I don't know. I've only seen. I guess I haven't seen the Ghost in the Shell movie. I've seen some of the shows. Uh, and I know uh, I've heard since then also a couple of great Matrix stories. Uh, w one of which I was so relieved because the one truly dumb part of that movie was the idea that that they would go through all this trouble just to generate human temperature body heat. <laughs> that, <laughs> along with a form of fusion, gives us all the power we need. <laughs> I always thought it was the dumbest crap ever. I was like, couldn't you write that? Like, I don't know, you're harvesting human creativity for problem solving purposes. You need blood or, or yeah. electrolytes then, or something. And then years later, I, I, I read some articles as well. Originally, they wanted to say that they were harvesting humans for their creative problem solving power. <laughs> and I was like, okay, thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I'm reading uh, the the legacy that the Wachowskis, creators of Matrix, took it, showed it to producer Joe Solder, said, we want to do that for real. And it says concepts included the digital reign, <clears throat> which Matrix certainly embraced that completely. Uh, and then uh, access to the Matrix, the holes in the back of the next, that's been in sci-fi forever. But um, uh, yeah, it looks like, I mean, I think it was super influential in a lot of stuff. Did, did, uh, did either of you guys ever hear and I believe it's only like a two minute story, uh, but Will Smith's telling of how he was almost Neo in the, in the matrix. I, I remember that he was up for that. Um, well, I don't know the story. Uh, 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 Bryce, if you could see if you could find it on YouTube, uh -huh. it should be pretty easy. I think it might be short enough that it's worth just hearing the audio of, because it's a very good telling of, of the story. Uh, 
uh, with a good punch out at at the at the end. Um, sure. Okay. I believe oh, that. And why you do that? <clears throat> oh yeah. Here we I go. I would say the. <laughs> oh. uh, Andrew, you go Andrew, first. Good, Bryce. No, Bryce. I was just trying to kill time for you. He's <laughs> okay. just that good. Yeah. Uh, here we go. This is uh, this is Will Smith's "Why I Turned Down the Matrix." Um. All right. This is one of them stories. Uh, I'm not proud of, but it's the truth. <laughs> I did turn down Neo in the Matrix. Hold up, y'all jumping to conclusions. <laughs> That was a, a crazy time in my life. It was like, however I threw the ball, it was going in. I had done Independence Day the year before. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing another alien movie. I don't want to be the alien movie guy. So I turned down Men in Black. And Steven Spielberg called me. He was producing. He said, like, why are you turning down the movie? I was like, you know, I just don't want to be the alien guy. He said, um, do me a favor. Don't use your brain for this one. <laughs> use my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. You did do Jaws. <laughs> you just get in that universal energy and nothing can go wrong. And the other side comes. And then you can't do nothing right. So, so 1998, it says. The Wachowskis, they came in and it was like they had only done one movie. They did a movie, I think it was called Bound. And they came in and they, they made a pitch for The Matrix. And as it turns out, they're geniuses. But there's a fine line in a pitch meeting between genius and what I experienced in the meeting. So <laughs> this is the actual pitch that they made for The Matrix. So dude, we're thinking like, like imagine you're in a fight and then you like jump. Imagine if you could stop <laughs> jumping in the middle of the jump. Sam, say that again? But then people could see around you 360 <laughs> while you're jumping, but while you're stopped really? jumping, right? And then we're going to invent these cameras, and then people can see the whole jump while you stop. <laughs> <in the middle laughs> <of the jump. laughs> so I made Wild Wild West. <laughs> 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 I'm not proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see people. You, you can punch out right there. He goes on to explain like what it was gonna be with uh, <laughs> who was gonna play Morpheus if he was gonna be Neo and all that stuff. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> what a great story. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be the yeah. guy who discovers that we are in a simulation and has having to pitch it to people like that. Imagine you can stop time, but you can move around and see in three <laughs> Oh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I got a sort of a weird tangential story about that is the guy that actually developed like that camera system had to leave Matrix to go work on another project that was in trouble. Uh, okay. Wait, uh, is, is this, is, was it Wing Commander? No, no, no. Uh, okay. No. But, okay. Left, cause, no, because remember they just copied that like later on. So he left, he left, he left Matrix to go work on another project. So the guy who was VFX took over and because this guy had left, but he had been the one that came up with the really cool tech. Uh, he didn't get the Oscar, didn't get the award for that or whatever because of, of like, are they claim for that? The other guy that did it kind of got it. Wow. Um, uh, but uh, he ended up getting an Oscar for What Dreams May Come, a project he had to go work on. So oh, it worked wow. out that way. But, but the guy, the dude, is Joel Hynek. Joel Hynek, Hynek. Um, uh, J. Allen Hynek. Project Blue Back book was his father. No kidding. Yes. Oh, wow. He got into VFX because his Spielberg, back to Spielberg, Spielberg brought in, wanted to do, take Project Blue Book, wanted to do a movie. So they brought in Joel, you know, J. Allen Hynek to go in, the, the professor, the astronomy professor to go in and work on this. Um, and Joel was into VFX and actually got to work on some of the VFX for Close Encounters. And so that started Joel's Boy. whole career in Hollywood. Uh, so, so. Real quick, just just to widen the net, um, uh, 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 for those who don't know, uh, Spielberg kind of went on his own arc about believing that we were being visited by aliens during Close Encounters. He thought that there was 
a strong likelihood. You know, Project Blue Book was the Air Force project to document all of the uh, evidence for uh, being visited by flying saucers or what have you. Um, and then, uh, uh, but by the time uh, Spielberg did the remake of War of the Worlds in the late 90s, he, uh, because of the evidence of so many cell phone cameras and so much uh, uh, poorer quality evidence for it, had had uh, become skeptical of it. But but that makes total sense that during Close Encounters, he would uh, be be involved with the the real life search for uh, aliens visiting us, and that uh, you know someone's kid would be involved. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, uh -huh. Also also if 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 we were at a bar. Uh, I would bet a beverage that uh, I'm almost certain that Wing Commander came out a few months before The Matrix. I think, uh, uh, and and because that was the first time, I, I'm, I'm almost certain of it. But even though it was probably shot after The Matrix, but just was a lower budget animal. Uh, so The Matrix One came out March 31st, 1999. Wing Commander March 12, 1999. Oh, so about two weeks. squeaker. Yeah, but. but yeah, but remember that, like, I could you can go back the bullet time tests and all that, the screen stuff, the stuff that was known about that was like a couple of years before because the companies working on it were shooting this stuff and people working on one set would go, oh, there's a thing they're doing here. Let's try this. Yeah. So it's, it's not it's, like they're watching, waiting for the movie to come out to hear about it. They knew about this stuff. Sure. Uh, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, like the moment you see a thing as possible, you put two and two together. Like we'd been seeing for 10 years, we had been seeing you know, morph uh, computer graphics. And then you you see just that one shot in the trailer from uh, Wing Commander, I just immediately it's like, oh, yeah, no, if you had an array of cameras, you could morph uh, all around in a circle. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Wait, yeah, I wonder... Blade, did Blade have it? No. I don't remember. Uh, that's they would do like fast frame stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blade was the first <laughs> Marvel superhero that it, it, it was a mega success. That's so amazing to me. Blade is amazing. Uh, that opening scene is amazing. Like the bizarreness of of you got that hot, sexy '90s as hell rave, and then all of a sudden the the uh, bloodbath just. just the uh, what do they call it the the fire alarm system goes off and <laughs> just yeah. rains blood on everyone <laughs> yeah oh it's such a great movie uh so and good. if you want to make it rain blood on us that's right only one buck an episode that's all we ask over at patreon.com slash weird things you can make the whole simulation just a little bit weirder with the, you think a flat earth is weird, it'll get, imagine how much weirder it'll be when you explain to our alien simulators mm -hmm. that you gave a dollar per episode to weird things. <laughs> I gave the dollar! You don't need to shout up, but we're, we've been conditioned to shout up. Yeah, right? They're actually in the ground. It's actually a hollow earth sort of situation. Oh, yeah. That's where they keep the servers. Wait, is there such a thing as up? I spent I spent an hour and a half arguing with my 13-year-old about whether or not water was wet. This again? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm just saying it's a powerful, it's a powerful thing. You can go mm. in a lot of circles and come up with a lot of ontological arguments. Yeah. Uh, but the, the one thing we'll never do is run you around in circles over at patreoncom weird. I mean, unless you pay us more, we, we can make the... that a Patreon tier. <laughs> <laughs> we'll run around in circles. The two dollar circle tier. So I've got a, a little quiz for you. A little. Oh. I read this article, and it was one of these things where. It's about a study, and I'm like, oh, do, do I know what the answer to this is going to be? And I did not, and so maybe you guys will do better. So right. this is the experiment. They, some New Zealand researchers randomly selected people from the election roll, and they sent them a letter, and they asked them to take a quiz, say, hey, we want you to do a quiz, and they gave people three options. They could want they they sent they, they randomly divided the people rather and so one group was given a deadline hey we need this ten days from when this was sent okay uh, another one was given they were given like three extra weeks so they're given like a month to respond mm -hmm. to it 
and then another one was given no deadline at all. So the options were somebody, people either got one that said, hey, we need you to return this back within 10 days. It's like a week, you know, when this being mailed, like we need to get back here. You know, like we need this within like 30 days. Okay. And the other group was like no deadline. Which group do you think responded the most? Re responded at all or responded yeah responded you know responded at all or responded you know which group which group sent the most oh, responses? I, thought, I, I, I thought this was going to be a question of the quality of work uh, did, but did, did they even responding did they sign up for this or was this a ran a completely random, random randomly thing and again okay. there's a lot of things that go into the idea of like well like who is this from whatever but like of all the, they're measuring of all the responses of all the responses they did get who represented what was the rep what would you break down uh, as and, far and as just went one last thing to clarify the response was the answer to the question that they had is that the way it was yeah it's a quiz like fill out this got brief it. quiz got it, got send it. It so, back so, so like, like, like who, who let, did it say, at all let's say here uh, at our business uh, it was just a simple form from the government saying how many employees you got just just write it down and send it back that kind of thing sure right um i would guess i mean you would think right that the more urgent um, it seemed that seems like such a slam dunk that it would be the 10 days, but it also, but I also think that that would be like, that would be the tricky gotcha of like, Oh, actually, if you don't tell people when they'll just do it right then. But well, uh, uh I don't know if you've heard this story before Bryce, but, um, uh, let me, and, and this is, this is us trying to noodle out your puzzle, Andrew. I'm not trying to derail things. Um, uh, I read that uh, uh, part of the reason that here in America we don't uh, 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 pay for blood or in general is because of, uh, the studies have shown that uh, uh, children, when they're handed a puzzle, um, uh, one group, they're just told to do it. And then uh, uh, 15 minutes goes by and they're, a lot, they're all like, OK, uh, um, you've done your 15 minutes, uh, do whatever you want. And then people will continue to do the puzzle or whatever. Uh, but if those same kids, the other group of kids, after 15 minutes, they're all like, uh, uh, you've done 15 minutes. Uh, here's your reward. Um, do whatever you want. Uh, because of the reward, because of the sense of completion, they, they would be more likely to push the puzzle away and, mm. and stop working on it just for its own joy. So, so I, uh, likewise, there's something about being rewarded or whatever. I, I, I don't know if that factors in into this impulse. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be my guess is that it's not the thing you would initially expect, which is having, having a strict deadline, but I am skeptical. I'm also I'm second level skeptical about uh, what seems to be a pretty a, a trap, a classic a, trap. A, a, yeah. So let me propose this theory. Okay. Um, my pitch for the no deadline would be instinctively, if the world is anything like me, they know that if they don't do it right now, it's never going to get done. Mm. And so therefore they might be more likely with no deadline uh, whereas 30 days seems like the worst option because you'll think to yourself, yeah, I'll have more time later in the future. But I will say that I nothing gets me more motivated to fill out a form than finding out that I'm already late on it. <laughs> and so I think I think there's probably assuming there's time for these dates to have come and gone. I think that that would be a big motivator the idea of like oh i am i am behind on this or i need to get this in the mail now so that i'm okay not. what uh, let, let me one last one last thought experiment okay. flip everything on its ear uh, uh pick a concert that you would like to go see okay and imagine getting an email three different versions that say we would like to invite you to come to this concert mm -hmm. um respond uh with the number of guests that you would like to bring in 10 days, in 30 days, or just respond yeah. with the number of guests you would like to bring. Yeah, I would. Then you would instantly do it in the unlimited category, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I think you won me over on that. I think, I think that's what I would put my eggs on. Yeah. We're putting eggs. We're put, eggs we're are put, suddenly part of the we're put, metaphor. We <laughs> gathered all of our metaphorical eggs and we put them in that basket. On the skillet of okay. no day. Uh, no so... Deadline. so uh one week one month no deadline okay mm -hmm. now response rates for this were pretty low and in and, and the total number of people sent to um I'm trying to break this down because they mentioned in the, the thing that it was a um 
300, 390, and 402 letters. Okay, so I think that that Relatively was... Relatively small. Basic. Yeah, yeah. So average, let's say, let's say like, that's the sampling rate of the... To this. I would say there's a, there's a, there's but, a but lot that, of that, that, that gets you to like a, at least... Nine, a I, hypothesis. I, I, I got to I, I gotta relearn my standard deviation numbers, but it's like that gets you over like 95, 97%, you know, of the world when, when you get the hundreds. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it, it, there's signal there. We'll say there's signal, there, right? Okay. The one week response rate was six point five nine percent. Okay. Okay. Oh no no I'm sorry. Letters each group was sent a thousand letters. Sorry. Got okay. it. The responses were were three hundred, three sixty, and four hundred yeah, yeah, or whatever. It, yeah, so I'll I'll just tell you. So well, there they was a thousand sixty three, thousand sixty six, thousand seventy. So we'll just we'll just say it. Yeah, essentially said. So the one week responses, seventy people responded. So it's a six point five nine percent response rate. Okay. 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 One month deadline. Fifty nine people responded, a five point five three percent. So far, rate. okay. So so far, possibly. Well, we were and thinking, yeah. The no deadline response rate was eight. Wow. 89. 89. Oh, no, 89. You're son right. of you're a right. biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Dead on. Dead, dead on. Your Brian model of what would happen was actually, it was exactly what happened. Uh, how interesting that that thinking of things upside down was convinced both is what convinced both of us uh they they sometimes say that you know to shake things up with the problem uh as a matter of fact um uh there's even one book on uh, stoicism that uh, suggested hey here's the thing take everything that you're miserable for and just pretend you're only pretending don't worry about it that you're thankful and you, you're super glad that everything awful in your life is happening uh and and make an argument and then and it's like Somehow, like that exercise, you, you know, it's been a rough year for all of us for various reasons. But like, uh, uh, but starting the phrase of "thank goodness, terrible thing happened in the last two years," "thank goodness, other terrible thing happened in the last two years," it felt very perverse and weird, but it was also very clarifying and, and refreshing in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Now do nine on nine eleven. Uh, okay, no. hey, no. Uh, that's that's. <laughs> I know. I, I, I just not my pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> not my monkey. Not my circus. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, it can be very helpful. Like for me, because like I'm thinking, if I got it, I'm like, uh, we need this in ten days, uh, seven days. We need this in a month or no deadline. I'm like. Well, I'm throwing this thing away. <laughs> no <laughs> deadline. I'm like done. Not even gonna bother. Do you, Do you know what's funny is I think you just gave me real clarity about a real situation that in my life that is happening is, um, you know, they're widening the road uh, to accommodate uh, cyclists, and as a result, there's you know they're having to go door to door with all this weird eminent domain stuff or whatever. And uh, uh, I called the guy and I was like, look, I got two questions. One, is there any wiggle room on this number? uh, But more importantly, is there a deadline? And he said, there's no deadline and I ain't done nothing (laughs) for (laughs) for months and months, months, because I know it's going to take forever for them to negotiate up and down the street uh, from some number. I think you just caused me to say, like, and meanwhile, like this, this this issue has been occupying my mind for half a year now. Yeah. And and however much money I would have gotten by fussing over it is probably not worth it. I should probably just today, like like as soon as we're done, just just get, just go get do that it. done. Just go give just go sell some land. <laughs> yeah, sell some just land. Go sell some land. <laughs> Hell yeah, I got sold, sir. Mm-hmm. I got uh one more uh it research that's interesting to you. So uh, a man was paralyzed from the neck down from a spinal cord injury he sustained in two thousand and seven. There has been a, a research collaboration called uh, BrainGate, which is what they've been working on is to try to restore capabilities or give people you know, certain functionality back. And they placed a 
interface, uh, this man, they call him T5 in the study, which is like a Michael Crichton novel writing itself here. Um, <laughs> or a very, very early version of the uh, Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> so they're saying that uh, with this implant, he was able to turn his thoughts into text with 94% accuracy. Uh, I think I saw maybe a month or two ago that just the headline and it didn't he wasn't his first message to his family uh i don't know okay well i, 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 I actually I, that's i i suddenly realized like that's the world's worst mentalist act i just did <laughs> <laughs> i sense that your first message after being <laughs> out of your cage mm. <laughs> of the body is <laughs> to your loved ones uh, and, and when they show this, like Bryce, if you show the images, and this is actually a system where he's like, like apparently trying to draw. Oh, it's like a. So we we're looking at what looks like almost like a a a, a character graph for a font, and each letter is represented by a a specific single line. Um, uh, kind of pathway. It looks a little bit like if you remember the Palm Pilot had the simplified version oh, yeah. of a printed script is mm -hmm. is what we're seeing. Um, I, I two want... observations for me. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Uh, wait, wait, uh, 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 the only other thought I had is um, I, I seem to remember for uh, uh, amputees uh, 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 to uh, there was some project that had an implant where. Uh, if they thought of a math problem, they were able to do an x-axis, and if they thought of a l linguistic uh, issue, they were able to do uh, a y-axis or some some version of that. I don't know if that is accurate at all or not. Yeah. So Bryce has got a uh, the web page for the actual research showing how the brain basically like it's following kind of the part of the brain that's trying to imagine trying to draw, and you can see the things being traced. So they say the rate is something like uh, 90 characters per minute. It's like 18, 18 words per minute, which isn't like super fast, but 94% accuracy, which I will tell you number two things that I can tell you right now. One, that's way better than I am on a mobile device keyboard. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I, I feel like they've gotten harder and it may be because I'm just stupid, but I feel like it's, they're not as good as they used to I, be. I, I agree, mm -hmm. I agree. And, and it might be that they're more ambitious with the autocorrecting that they're doing. Because um, yeah. for some reason, every time I type my ad address, uh, 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 Austin comma TX gets autocorrected to Austin comma TO, which yeah. seems like a fairly elementary yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd be curious to measure because like I've noticed, like I feel like I'm worse at it than I was before. So I'd say he's doing better than I am here, and also I'd say his handwriting much better than my handwriting. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can understand same. these letters. Mm -hmm. So, um, so all he, so, so he's, 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 he's creating these lines by, I guess, uh, imagining or, or trying to activate the part of his brain that would use his hand to write, um, these letters with say a pen or a pencil. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is me totally hypothesizing here and I'm sure the article will have more correct details, but I remember there being a gaming interface that was being worked on in the late 90s that essentially worked on the idiomotor response. Like you just laid your hands uh, on this pad and then you thought about skiing to the left and those small micromuscular movements, you know, caused your skier to move left. And then you thought about skiing to the right and you moved right and so on. Uh, so I wonder if it's some, if, if, if subjectively this sensation isn't something like that, only with a cursor. Uh, would it have yeah. been called Mind Drive? Yeah, that's the one. God, he's good. <laughs> Bryce is the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> I turned off autocorrect to see how that works. Oh, that'll be wild. Ooh. Yeah, let's see if we can if we can pull up an, an image of the device here, but. Um... Uh, oh, it's like a finger. Yeah. Sensor. So, so picture uh, uh, you're having your pulse taken or something. You you stick your finger into a little gizmo, and then you just lay and relax your hand and think of it going one way or the other. Wow. I I I, I was I'm gonna ask, and you might not know, but like, was it good? Was it good at this? Uh, there, I I remember they had it at the one of the, the local software stores. I tried it, and it was. It had that. It had that. 
oh wow, th- it, it had that Dragon's Lair laser disc game vibe where you're like, someday this is gonna be great. So, uh, and uh, it, yeah, pause it. Here, two things. One, it's complete bullshit. Really, it the idiom motor. It's the idiom motor effect because oh, that, what it that's is. That's why I said. That's why I said. Yeah, read. But I mean, did you just read the text? Uh, Miramax says Mind Drive will let users essentially produce their own films. You'll be able to watch a movie and decide which door to go through or whether or not you want your character to survive or die. Uh, originally developed in Siberia by former U.S. government scientists working on mind control projects, abandoned after the Soviet Union dissolved, rediscovered by Ron Gordon, um, the former head of Atari. Boy. <laughs> Einstein. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like the type of thing that you would say uh, just after the collapse if you uh, to somebody who had a lot of money <laughs> burning a hole in their pocket. Einstein says you only use 10% of your brain. Gordon's view is to use this technology to put the other 90% to <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's the, yeah, that that's, the, that's the BS. That's the BS. Yeah. But the idiomotor response is real, though. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, crazy. So. It is, it is, you know, interesting to see what research is doing because you have this, you have Neuralink, you have, you know, it's a, it's a hot area. Mm. And, and the exciting thing is, is that, you know, people are like, ah, do we really need it? I'm like, oh, talk to a paraplegic. So talk to somebody who doesn't have, you know, the same capabilities. Talk, we talk do to anybody them. with locked in syndrome or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's really the people who benefit the most it's not like well our goal is then we're going to force you down and stomp stamp this into your head how that um, comes later is, do you know more about how he is um physically attached to this this mechanism um because well I, you can see right there uh if 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 i just don't know what i'm looking at well, I'm well, looking well at i i i think <laughs> what they do is they again boy boy am i unreliable on this but 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 i've read enough like I, I, andrew uh don't they do brain surgery where they lay kind of an electrical mesh over it? Yeah, and they then, pull and then, out part of. But but then but then like you know transcranially they're uh, they're able to get kind of like a, a, a they, they RFID. Pull out your, pull out, they pull out part of your scalp. They pull out of your your skull. They pull out part of your skull and they put this. They put the electrodes in there. So that's my current understanding. That's what you do is you have to open up the brain, open up the scalp, and then open up the the skull and implant that in there. And then there's there. Uh, there are various types of implants. There are some where, you know, I, I, I guess they just go straight through your skin, but then others where you're able to seal everything up and then you, you essentially have a, you know, yeah, a Neuralink magnet on is there. working on a thing. Yeah. That goes underneath it. Then it heals over and then you just place it something over it. So they're working on like, they're trying to simplify that. Hmm. Yeah. So, so, the, so think the, about like, what we learned like, about like RFID chips, uh, like uh, uh, Jason Murphy has one, you know, in the webbing of his hand. And uh, uh, it's 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 only powered when the the magnet device is near it. Do you do you think yeah. that it would be feasible? Not even necessarily short term, but but possibly feasible that that technology, or say something like this assistive thing, um, can become like it can be entirely external, right? Not needing implants or surgeries that, or needles uh, or th- there is in. Andrew probably knows more about this than me, but uh, 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 transcranial uh, magnetic stimulation is basically a gigantic hat that 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 does very intense uh, uh, magnetic waves. Uh, the last time I read up on it, the most that they were able to do is press a button, and then people would report, "Oh, good God, I'm sad beyond words." And then they pressed another button, and then they move it, and they're like, "I don't know why, but I'm terrified right now." Oh. <laughs> and so, like, yeah. So that that's for like, as Brian said, is putting like trying to put signals into your head, but like very big regions because it's not precise. Trying to read if you want to control a thing, you need to get a signal. You have the problem is when you're trying to pick up individual or groups of neurons that are centimeters down into the brain. How do you do that? Because you're surrounded by all these other neurons. And if you're trying to pick up any kind of RF or it's so low and then it's just noise for everything else. So that's why right now, and I've had a discussion with a friend who's like, oh, we'll have a way. I'm like, maybe, but we have no idea how that would work right now. There's there's no no theoretical model 
like it, you know, there's a better theoretical model for like a warp drive than how you're going to pick up something well, that's well, like, the, 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 you know, three centimeters deep into the brain. In a very, very rudimentary sense, I guess you could say it's close to an fMRI where they can, you know, that, that that's a very, you know, they, they, that's just regions of your brain that they're looking at lighting up as and you that, think and, about things. Yeah, that's like trying to x-ray a microprocessor to tell you what the software right. is doing at the time. Right. Mm. Yeah, it will tell you what games are running what apps are running on it that's the hard part is that it's it's but but it does as as you know as peter Thiel says in his in the title of his book take uh, in some sense from zero to one uh after yeah, after that it seems all like resolution but it's easy to wave our hands and just say yeah that's an engineering problem when it may be a you know um Kind of like a kind of like getting to the speed of light is just an engineering problem, but the problem is, <laughs> the problem being that to it's get like, to that last part of the speed of light requires all the energy of the universe, mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, yeah, there might be, and I'm not like oh we'll never I'm not I'm not that position at all I'm just like you know everything I've read I'm like like yeah we haven't we don't have a really good one for this one yet <laughs> we may mm -hmm. somebody could surprise us I hope so or just hack into the simulation <laughs> that'd be the easy way uh, yeah god yeah. how great would it be if it was a simulation because all of a sudden then there's no reason that we can't time travel the then there's no reason that we can't warp we get well, sure, all kinds of, of cheat codes the simulation could not allow for it too yeah we could be locked in I mean, we could those, be walled those, garden those, those rules could be in place to keep the simulation from crashing uh yeah Unless you go up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, B A B A, yeah. B -A select so start. Can I can I can I explain my thought on simulation theory just real quick? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I I, I think extremely <sighs> likely, but also I have no reason to believe that our simulation is particularly special or serves any sort of function any more than if I run some test code to see what happens. We literally could be the startup sequence for something much more interesting than us. We literally could be. Every time you run an execution, you do tests and stuff like we're just some little minor insignificant little thing. You know, we're a screensaver or something. You I know, mean, just... that's that's sort of a spoiler alert for anyone who's not read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But it could be that we are a big calculator. We're, just, we're to answer one very specific, bizarre question. <laughs> and, and, and we might be a unit test function like that's that's the thing is like when you if you really get at a deep simulation, like. Oh yeah, like like you. This is you know we're like uh, you know we're like the the screen on Mario playing in some arcade that nobody's paying attention to. Go look at our world, it's amazing. And it's like no, no you're not. Nobody cares. Uh, well, that's that's. Oh man. On that note, yeah, <laughs> I got I I got I I, I, I I feel like we can go all day. Uh, do you got any picks? I got picks. What you, you got, got? Picks? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm. I am. Man, make me go first. I'm going to pull up a chart because I'm going to mention a book you just mentioned, and I'm going to show you. I did a little bit of data on this because I just finished reading again Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Oh no, kidding! And uh, he is. I am a big believer in. I like people who are outside of the box thinkers. Okay. And Peter Thiel is a very interesting guy. And I'm not saying you have to then accept every premise he has, but if you look at some of his testable premises, he wrote that book zero to one. It was law. It was, it was published September 16th, 2014. While reading the book, I'm noticing that there were about six companies that he was really pie on as far as saying these are really good examples of companies that are doing the things he says that you need to do to build a really successful company hmm. these companies most of them happen to be run by friends of his but not all of them so he of the companies he mentioned and i said I, i'm curious i said let me write down those companies let me go see what their share price was when the book was published oh man and then let me see what their share price is today hmm. And then let me calculate, like if you put in, let's say, you know, $10,000 into each one of these companies, what would it be worth today? What a brilliant right. way to take advantage of a natural experiment. 
Ah, I was like, because I'm curious, because I'm like, I'm like, I think he's really smart. Is this guy I, like, and so, because a lot of like, I like this person. I'm like, I like stuff I can test. So now that we have, we've had, you know, the seven years ago that book came out. Um, if if you take those six companies, and do you, put do, 10, do you, have, each, so do you, you happen to remember which ones they were? Oh, I have a whole spreadsheet in front of me, Brian. Or, or just name name the six if you. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you that yet. Dang it. Okay. I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. I'm going to tell you incrementally. Okay. First, if you put in $60,000 back then, do you think your money would be worth less, the same, or a little bit more? I doubled? Mean, uh, full, uh, full disclosure, I only recently found out that te almost 10 years ago, I put a little bit of money into tesla um so i'm gonna say it's a lot more money <laughs> yeah i mean even just like yeah i i wouldn't even know how to guess how much more but i think i think it would be more um a lot more like uh like i i'd say i would say i would say possibly uh, 30 to 40 x dr arnold says okay. 10 10 x i would say more than 10 x i don't know about 40 x i would say 10 to 20 x because here's the thing, remember, you had to spread it across all the companies he was big on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, all six. Okay, so it that means that not all the companies did well. Some of them got sold. Some of them were at a really high point of valuation then, okay? So one of the companies he mentioned was LinkedIn by his buddy Reed Hoffman, former PayPal Mafia. Sure. LinkedIn, at that point, its share price was 206 LinkedIn got sold to Mike... Uh, Salesforce or whoever bought LinkedIn, I think Salesforce, it's Microsoft. LinkedIn's Microsoft. Thank you. Yeah, Microsoft. Uh, it was sold for one hundred and ninety-six dollars per share. So you would have lost five hundred dollars. Oh okay. wow! LinkedIn. I would not have seen huh. that coming. But but I guess uh, okay. that far ago, that would have been kind of peak link LinkedIn. So yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. It was LinkedIn was really high. Okay, so another one was Twitter. Twitter mm. uh, was selling for fifty-three dollars a share. And then uh, Twitter current, oh, let's see what Twitter is today. Twitter share price. Uh, uh, Twitter share price right now is $54, right? So let's say 54 point. And it was what before, 56? It was 53. 53, okay. So, so was... you would have made $189 hey. on that Twitter investment. Look at that. Okay. That's uh... Now the other companies were Tesla, Palantir, Facebook, and Apple. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. so okay. All right. <laughs> your, 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 your Palantir investment, uh, $10 a share. Palantir, that's Peter Thiel's company, by the way, now sells for 20. I actually think Palantir stock is 26.84 today. So let's put that in there. Uh, your Palantir stock would now be worth $26,840. So you made $16,000 on top of what you invested. Okay. Great. Okay. Two, uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Your Facebook stock was selling at $79 per share. It's now at $323. Yeah. Uh, this, um, that's a 338. Oh, that's actually more, 338. So it's actually went up. That's higher than what I did. Number. Your Facebook stock is now worth $42,000 and $785. Yep. Uh, okay. So, okay. Your Apple stock, let's look at Apple share price. Let's do it today. This is also peak Apple. This is, what, four, four or five years after the iPhone is introduced? This is not peak Apple, Brian. Oh, 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 oh. Apple. I, I, I'm so, sorry, sorry. I mean, like, Apple very strong. Yeah, Apple strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's strong. Apple stock was selling at uh, $26 per share. Oh, my gosh. Really? Apple stock now is $150 per share. Wow. Okay. So that's worth that $10,000 investment be worth $57,000. Wow. Okay. Finally, we get to uh Tesla. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um I mean, how I impressive of a company can it be? I, it's it's uh, I don't know. Well, they're trying to do too many things, Brian. They're trying to make cars, energy systems, robots, all this. And that the, you know, the CEO, he is a nut. Side story. Side story. Back in 2003, I decided I'm going to put my meager savings, meager, infants, meager savings into Apple stock. I go talk to a friend who's been a big investor guy or whatever, and he had like one big deal. 
I go, I just put all an apple. It goes, oh, no, why? <laughs> the guys on street hate Steve Jobs. Why would you do that? And I'm like, I, I like the company and I think he's smart. Like, oh, dude, get it out now. I did not. <laughs> um, and so that that is, Henry, how do you support yourself as a creator, a writer and all that? Oh, get a bunch of Apple stock early on. <laughs> right. And wait for things to hit. So uh, Apple, uh, so Tesla, Tesla's share price on that day was $55 per share. Tesla's share price today, well, I don't know what a Tesla today did have a bit of a, a, a drop. Uh, Tesla's share price right now did, is did, $1,100. Yeah, one thousand one hundred and how much? Sixty-three. Oh, mm. so that Tesla stock is now worth two hundred to ten thousand, two hundred less, two hundred eleven thousand dollars. So you would have made two hundred grand on top of that. So if you had invested in the Peter Thiel portfolio, as implied in zero to one, uh, a you know a thousand dollars in each one of those companies would be worth thirty-five thousand dollars today. Wow! 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 Wait, go back. Somebody made money on Tesla. Yeah, BioCal. Uh, uh, or no, no, no. Good. Shift Shiftlock said says I made a fortune on Tesla thanks to Andrew. I bought a bunch a few years ago after hearing Andrew talk about it on this show. You're welcome. <laughs> I never. Uh, I if, if, let me reemphasize. Uh, <laughs> uh, I too bought because Andrew talking about it, but uh, but uh, apparently not as much as you did. <laughs> Shiftlock, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, um. I will only say this once because I don't want to be that guy, but our fans might find this funny or amusing. I took everything I made from Shark Week and put it in Tesla. And I made what is probably the, took the dumbest, the, I compounded the two dumbest, riskiest things you possibly could have done. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Especially because on, on Shark Week, there you are being a real life Tony Stark. Yeah. And so you take it all and act like Tony Stark and throw it on the real life Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, that that was a that was a very that was a very fortunate decision. Mm -hmm. um, so, That's great. Uh but uh yeah, I would I in talking about money, all this sort of stuff, my advice to everybody, one, is like, don't listen to anybody, especially me or anybody like, I don't, I don't want to go, I will, I've only twice in my life called up friends and said, listen, the fundamentals on this are different than people understand it. And so I'm getting into it, whatever, but I don't, I never wanted to be like, oh, you got to do this. Cause I've got so much dumb advice on that. I never wanted to be that. I will never tell anybody here, oh, you should go invest in this or whatever. Cause it's risky. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of that in play. Um, but but people will go if when I first started investing and I didn't have much money, I'm like, well, I don't really have much to invest. And then I'm like, maybe that's why I should and play it safe or whatever. Invest in, invest in companies that I use, I think will be around in 10 years, whatever like that. Everybody, even if you're like, I have credit card debt or whatever, I'm like, you know what? 50 bucks a month. Right. Just start, have some pile of there's money you owe. Have a pile of money that's growing for you. Have a pile of money that's growing. Don't wait for that other thing to go away because that may, and because it, the, this is going to be counterintuitive, but the action is more important than the amount in the scheme of things. The action of saying, you know what, I am going to open up an investment account and put some money away and some, you know, standard stuff. It's, I'm going to do that in every month. It's uh, there's, there's the math nerd part of your brain and then there's the human part of your brain. And what you have to do is defeat the human part of the, your brain and begin the action. Uh, we've, in, I don't know, maybe we could talk about it in after things or whatever, but you know, we've, we've talked about the richest man in Babylon and how, you know, once you start the habit of setting aside a little bit each month, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very conservative. I put everything in a Roth IRA, uh, and, and I like the S and P 500 because it outperforms 80% of all index funds and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, in general, you know, speculating on any one stock is super duper risky, but, yep. um, uh, there's, it, it's also, a, a usually a winning strategy to have some crazy lottery tickets in your portfolio portfolio as well. Yeah. So uh, when, when, when I, when I did buy Tesla, I, I told my wife, I was like, I'm flushing th this very small amount of money down the toilet, sweetheart. And she was like, all right, well, that's your account, not mine. <laughs> and, and that's, that's, that's like, I, 
I could have gone way more in than I did, but I'm also like, I don't know. And I don't, if it fails, I don't want to have nothing. And so I look at like the latest run has been great and wonderful. And I, and part of me, I'll sit down like, oh yeah, if I did this, then I would have had, oh, I'd be like there. But I'm like, no, I'm very happy, very happy with what I did. And so, uh, yeah, I didn't even know. And, and that's the other thing is once I made that decision, I totally forgot about it. And it, I literally yep. Yep. walked into the room one day. I'm like, why is that on the news? Hey, don't I own some of that? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah. oh, well, okay. Uh, I have to run. I have to go do a thing about a thing. But uh, we could actually do next week or so. Let's yeah. actually talk a little money strategy stuff from people who are going to tell you we're not actually, experts. Don't listen to us. Yeah, but, but but maybe we can solicit. Send us emails so we could talk about them on After Things. Yep. Uh, uh, talk of money stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll make my picks really, really quick. Um, uh, I just started. I just I just. I'm only uh, 30 minutes of, or uh, maybe 45 minutes into uh, uh, John McCorder's book, uh, Woke Racism, and my eyebrows are all the way on the back of my head. I'm just like, wow, that dude is pulling no punches. So I can't, I, 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 I don't know if I can recommend it or not yet because I ain't got far enough in it, but wow. Can, um, can you explain what it is about? He, he makes the case kind of, it reminds me a lot of, uh, 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 Michael Crichton wrote uh, uh, or delivered a speech in which he uh, drew a whole bunch of parallels of um, uh, environmentalism as a secular religion, uh, uh, complete with uh, uh, inherent sin, uh, a, 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 a state of, uh, of grace and purity that had a, 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 a collapse in sin and we all must atone for our sins and all he drew, drew all these structural parallels and it looks like that's what John McCorder's doing with um, uh, 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 with a uh, uh, third wave of uh, uh, anti-racism. Uh, first wave of anti-racism being freeing the slave. Second wave of anti-racism being 1960s. Hey, let's let's all uh, treat everyone uh, uh, equally and well. Uh, uh, in his case, uh, as I understand it, in the first chapter of the book, is uh, that third wave uh, anti-racism is. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even want to. Be, I don't even feel comfortable saying uh, is that, is that white people should always feel bad always and and uh, he hmm. he makes the case that it's a, um, uh, a, a, a a a secular religious view. Uh, I would be interested to know why he thinks that that is. Uh, uh, he wrote a good thing. He he wrote a book all about it. Uh, but but if you want to hear a short version of that, um, he did an hour long interview with our friend Andrew Heaton on the political orphanage. So I'll make that uh, 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 a pick, uh, the political orphanage by Andrew Heaton, our friend. Uh, well, um, uh, cool. Um, I'll, I'll find that and put that in the show notes. Um, I, I've got a pick. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of lean. I don't have any um, maybe new things, but uh, I, I had a good good time over the weekend watching the F1 race and and Gosh, I think it's so fun and easy to get to with the uh, the Formula One Drive to Survive show on Netflix. Um, people talk about that they don't like it and that it um, over heightens the drama between the racers. There's one guy who's doing very well right now who says, I don't want to be part of that show anymore because it over dramatizes everything. But then he goes on the radio and he talks crap about all the other racers. So there's, <laughs> there's, it's 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 kind of its own sort of bit of kayfabe there. But uh, uh, Drive to Survive, I think, is really fun on Netflix. So. Well, I turned oh. out I don't have to be in a place in a certain place. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. What well, do you want to take us home? Sure. Bryce, you or, seem upset the fact that I'm still here. No, you we're, thr we're, we're thrilled. Your timing Welcome was perfect. Back. You got oh, back just Bryce, at the right it's moment. It's like you walked in, opened up the door, and saw me sitting in the kitchen. And you're like, oh, oh, well, you're here now. This is fine. <laughs> no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, here to take us home, it's Andrew Maine. It's been awkward <laughs> and weird and weird. Already, well. Uh, uh, also, I, I, I wish I, uh, Brian. Are you picking up that tone? Are you? I wish I. Uh, I wish we had the. Uh, uh, well, uh, in in Bryce's defense, I I was bringing up a, a, a very a very controversial book as as something that I just started the uh, John McCarter uh, uh, woke racism book. Oh, uh, I heard all of it. I yeah. Okay. It. Okay. Uh, but the uh, uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, uh, boy, am I enjoying Harley Quinn on HBO Max. Man, am I enjoying it. 
It's so good. Have you have you have you seen any of it, Andrew? I can't stand the voice, and I don't know how the voice is for this. It's toned but down. Harley it's, Quinn's it's, voice. It's okay. toned down a lot. It's uh, but but I I know what you're talking about the the over the top. Uh, oh golly, yeah, yeah. That, uh, just. Um, like Margot Robbie, she's amazing when she does it. And then, I mean, but her voice, like, I'm like, I just, I don't, I don't. Uh, you, you know how normally people do that thing where there is, where it's like, give it till episode blank and, and then you could decide. Um, I'm going to say this, give it 15 seconds and you could be right. in or out. It's the only show I've ever experienced like that. 15 seconds is the challenge. Oh. Yes. Uh, Stoic Skrull wants to know if, if you've seen, seen Dune. How many times have you, you know seen Dune? Do you know they're starting shooting? The shooting's going to start July next year. It, Villeneuve is oh, like, man. oh, Pretty late. We, we may not be able to start shooting until fall. And I'm thinking, oh, that's signal to like uh, legendary. Um, yeah, I got another project you got to buy out because uh, if you want this thing and you made me wait, you know, and apparently deals were made plus also july arrakis is going to be even hotter because that's the middle of the summer <laughs> yep 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 uh someone points out that harley couldn't start out as a cartoon character yeah i like it was a batman animated series or whatever yep. i mean that was like legendary like one of the biggest contributions to batman lore you know in forever like the amount of great stuff that came out of there was phenomenal uh okay uh let's take a break if we need to or after things? Uh, oh, cool. uh, yeah. Well, if we already teed up that we're uh, skipping after things, I think that's Maybe? that's the way the canon reads. And we'll do a, a jumbo size one where we talk money next week. I'm comfortable okay, cool. with that. That works. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for cool. tuning in. We'll be back in a few hours with uh, Court Killers. Cool. And uh, yeah. See you Love then. you guys. Bye. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you, Bryce. Thank you very, very much for always pulling this thing together. I don't on you. It's fun. And I'm Good. a petty small man. Good. I'm trying to fade out. And I just watched. Good.